Hi everybody, my name is Jan Gustafsson, the year is 2022 and welcome to a brand new season of Jan's Opening Clinic, the show where I answer very tough opening questions from Chess24 Premium users to the best of my knowledge. You can ask me a question in the news article that we publish about it and then I'll sit here and ponder it, hopefully say something useful or learn something myself. Let's jump right into the action and see what we have. First question by Aradia Garg, Fidemaster. Want to ask Jan why people do not go for the marshal as often and almost not have gone for it at all in world championship matches, except for Kramnik Leko, Brisago 04. I feel that in the marshal there are main lines where in white gets a slight pull, for example, D3 variation. Agreed that it is probably draw with correct play, but a slight tangible edge without much risk. Is that not what one hopes for in a World Championship match? Let's put the marshal on the board and figure it out there. I do think there are reasons why it hasn't been seen much in world championship matches obviously it takes two to party but magnus has used it or the move order we should say at least in his matches in 2016 and 2021 so the chances were there this is the starting position and the invitation to play the marshal which would start with pawn to c3 and pawn to d5. But white has not done this much, instead preferring the move a4 or the move h3 here. I think the main reason is that with a4 and h3 you might get, or you increase your chances of getting a chess game. Those aren't exactly leading to an advantage, but when you're preparing for the marshal nowadays on world championship level, you obviously want to have your repertoire ready after c3 d5 but you sort of expect the moves a4 h3 somewhat more because i think at the highest of levels the chances of white getting a game here are not considered to be big enough i understand the reasoning that white doesn't take a risk and if you start looking at it with computers sometimes it does look like white has a small pull with nothing to worry about and some chances. But these are lines where the nature of the play is so direct that it's very, very hard to get a playable position as an outcome. And you usually trust your opponent or your opponent's team to have done their homework well enough that this would just be a draw. And therefore, I sort of understand that people haven't done much. You mentioned the move d3, obviously. White could play d4 as well here, but d3 at the highest levels has indeed been the critical question. For the last couple of years, black goes bishop d6, white goes rook to e1. And the first problem here from white's perspective is that black has a bunch of options. If you want to play it with white, you would have to clean them all, all up in a sense of trying to get a game there. The deeper you go in either of the options, we can go through them quickly, the more likely you will probably feel that it's just a draw in the end and therefore not worth one of your white games. So the main line in this position is bishop to f5 and the way to continue the game is queen to f3. After which I still have a soft spot for this move rook to e8 leading to very forcing play Rook takes, queen takes, knight d2. I'll just briefly show the main line here. Queen e1, knight f1, bishop g6. Here you can try all kinds of things. h3, h4, g3 is the main move. b4, c4, knight f6. One of the crazier lines out there. It starts with something like this. And yeah, I understand where it moved. 22 or whatever, but the play is kind of forcing. 
<clears throat> something like this. And here, I guess the critical tries pawn to c5. The line does continue, but if you continue clicking here, you will probably not manage to get a serious advantage with white. And then you could have a debate if the remaining positions are playable or just drawn. That is just, just one of the options. <clears throat> if we back up all the way to the position after queen f3, there's also the much more solid move queen to h4. Attacking this pawn, white is go g3, queen to h3. Practice and computers have shown that taking the pawn directly is nothing. So white has tried to return the pawn here with bishop to e3. Bishop takes, knight to d2. And here, I'm not sure if this, these are the positions you had in mind. White was pushing a little bit in these endgames after queen f5. Bishop to d4 or pawn to a4. Which aren't exactly winning either. But here, I would give white that small risk-free advantage that he's been seeking. Recently, people started playing bishop f5 here, though, instead of queen f5. And this has also turned out to be a very, very tough nut to crack. You can grab a pawn, but it's a typical martial situation where with the two bishops and free play. I don't think this is considered a serious winning attempt. So I kind of agree with you that the positions tend to be safe for white. And I wouldn't I wouldn't rule it out that someone someone tries this if we see more marshals in world championship matches. But I don't think it's very practical because the most likely scenario is you will just be shown a piece of preparation in one of these lines and shake hands and you wasted a white game, which of course black should hold his ground in pretty much every line, but the nature of the play after a4 or h3 or 6d3 instead of c3, sorry, I struggle finding words, but regular viewers will be used to that, tends to be less forcing, so there's room for getting good positions. For example, Nepomnishi did get a very good position with 8a4 in which game was it? game number five of the match. So I think people just consider this to be a better try. For completeness sake, after c3, d5, takes, takes, rook e5, c6, d3, you also have to reckon with the line queen h4, which used to have a bad reputation, but Anish and others, but mainly this associated with the game Duda versus Anish to me in recent times, have shown that things aren't so simple here. And this is yet another line where if you keep clicking enough, you will probably find it very, very tough to find an advantage or even a playable position for white. So long story short, c3 to forcing at the highest of levels where you trust your opponent to have done his homework and don't really expect to get anything with it. But as I said, it's as good a move as any here. It's not like it leads to a smaller advantage than a4 or h3. It just leads to more forcing play and therefore the likelihood of getting a chess game, I think, is very limited in c3d5. We shall see though, maybe there will be a white, a white martial knight in the future bringing it all back, but I sort of doubt it. Thank you for the question. Let's, let's see what else we have. Afuro Samurai saying, it is early and I'm not so sure what I'd like to ask anyway. So here it goes a bit more offbeat. b4, e5, bishop b2, bishop takes b4, bishop e5, knight of six, magma style, four c3, and what now? I had that position in a few blitz games and couldn't feel comfortable in any of them, despite it being an obviously okay position. What would you recommend against 1b4? And if it is e5, what about this line? If you could talk a bit more about the normal white approach and what black does in general, it would be appreciated as well. Thanks. Please come back more regularly. I missed it. 
Thank you, we're back. What is there to say? 1B4, not very high on my list of worry, worries, but as usual, if the world champion does something, people will pay attention. I don't know. So the line, the line that Magnus played is pawn to e5. This is the most principled move. Um, bishop b2, bishop takes b4, bishop takes e5, knight to f6, and now c3. Though I guess e3 or even g3 would lead to the same type of positions where um, White tries to exchange this bishop for the knight and then put his pawns on dark squares. And yeah, engines are not very worried about this approach for, I guess, the obvious reason that black is fine. But... It is an interesting positional concept, like, sorry, I struggle to speak. Um, very classical, you give up the, your dark square bishop, put your pawns on, on these dark squares, try to restrict the enemy bishop and play that position. If we take it move by move, I guess white could go g3 or, or e3 here or take first. I'm not sure the move order matters that much. Seems that for black, it's useful to throw in c5 against both g3 and e3. The usual, trying to get as much of a stake in the center as possible before going knight c6, as white wants to take here anyway. So c5, let's say bishop g2, pawn to d5. And yeah, black wants to castle. White will most likely take here without being asked if white waits with it for too long like castles and e3 then this bishop might not get a chance to exchange, exchange itself for that knight and after e3 knight e4 for example the bishop can start looking <laughs> looking a little funny i did not drink last night i promise So usually white wants to, to get rid of it at some point here. Obviously could have done it a move later. And play this position where if he manages to play all the moves he would like to, e3, knight e2, knight d2, castles, he could have a bit of pressure against the weakened pawn on d5. And the structure is not so easy for black to handle. But there's the usual move by move, it's fine for black argument. For example, here, e3. One key move seems to be queen to a5 before white is fully developed, intending to play c takes d4 without it being met by c takes d. And yeah, as you can see from the computer, the computer says black is doing very well here, right? Knight e2, c takes d. Now white is to recapture with the e pawn, and his own structure is not as pretty as he would like it to be. Black just develops quickly. Bishop g4, tending rook e8. Black is in excellent shape. So, the concept is interesting positionally, and it does require black to play energetically. The c5 and tending d5, castles, knight c6, does seem to be the approach. And if black does so, it is white who will somewhat struggle to equalize. e3 is similar, black goes c5, white once again takes at some point, the setup white wants will always include g3, bishop, g2, d4, some order. Here if white tries to, to do without g3 for now, play d4, black goes knight c6, not really worried, not the only move either, but black isn't worried about d5 opening up his bishop here, as white is trying to restrict that bishop. And once again, speedy development will get the, the trick done. Here if knight d2, d5, and if white tries to play without without the knight e2, g3 plan, then black might even get ambitious and start pushing on the queen side here with c4 and b5. So that's probably not a great idea from white's perspective. 
So yeah, I'm not sure what general things I have to say. I agree that it is positionally a bit more venomous than it looks, because especially after c5 with the center <clears throat> being the way it is, white could end up being better if black doesn't play dynamically and put pressure. But if he does do this, if he goes for c5, knight to 6, d5, and then focus on asking questions really quickly, I do not see how, how white, frankly, equalizes here, for example, g3, queen a5 is once again very, very effective, threatening c takes d4. And yeah. It was a cool concept to confuse people, but I would not expect Magnus to make this his main weapon. As for 1b4 in general, can't say I've given it a lot of thought. One quick point is that after b4, let's say black goes d5, bishop b2, knight to f6. I would guess most white players would start with e3 here, trying to keep their options open. And here you could try to transpose sort of to our line but with white having started with e3 instead of c3. So e5, bishop takes, bishop takes b4. And this does have the advantage that if white goes c3 here, we don't have to play bishop e7, but since we already played d5, we could go, go bishop d6, which looks like an even more harmonious setup. Now bishop f6, queen f6. Black is just better with the bishop here. And after bishop takes d6, queen takes d6. I would also prefer black. So this could be a little move order device. White is not forced to play e3. He could play knight f3, for example, when black has all kinds of options. I also don't mind going e6 here, just attacking the pawn after a3. And playing c5 also looks very, very sound. Takes, pawn takes. And white does have a nominal extra pawn in the set in the center, sort of, if we count the c-pawn versus the b-pawn. But black just has very easy development. Knight c6, castles, bishop d6 back. So I don't really see any worries. It was a fun idea for getting a game or two with one b4. But objectively or computeristically, it is white fighting for equality in these positions. So it's nothing that should keep us up at night. Want to be for. As for other options, I don't know. Like, I'm assuming knight f6, g6 is fine here as well. Never gave it much thought, but b4 fits him better in these sort of king's Indian positions where white can play. I don't know. c4, knight f3, g3. So, wouldn't be very, very high on my to do list. I kind of like this knight f6, d5, e3, e5 idea. But being principled and playing b4, e5. And this really does not look like something that black should worry about either. He does have to play dynamically, though, in these positions. With this c5, knight c6, d5, and queen a5 key move. Hope that helped to deal, to deal with 1b4. Thanks for the question, Mr. Samurai. What else do we have? Sushi Boy number eight is saying, Hi Jan, what is your opinion on the, of the Christmas tree plants in the Queen's Indian and Karo? QID stands for Queen's Indian Defense. D4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, b6, g3, bishop b7, bishop g2, bishop b7, castles, rook e1, d5, takes, takes, knight c3, knight bd7, bishop f4, c5, h4, knight e4, e3, knight tf6. And e4, c6, d4, d5, takes, takes, bishop d3, knight c6, c3, knight f6, h3, g6, bishop f4, bishop f5, bishop e2, e6, knight d2, h5. Modern chess, huh? Not sure if there is any similarity between the two. They both do build the Christmas tree. We'll put them on the board in a minute. As these structures aren't in any books, hope that you can explain a bit what are the plans. Oh, the P word is back. The plans in such, such structures and whether they are promising. Thanks for your guidance, as always. <clears throat> Viewers of the old shows might know that I struggle 
with plants and plants versus zombies because to my mind and this might have to do more with with me than with the game of chess although i'm not sure it is a concrete concrete game and most positions are different so plants plants are tough for me but we shall try and it is an interesting formation that gets mentioned here let's try to put it on the board d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight f3 b6 g3 bishop b7 bishop g2 bishop e7 castles castles rook to e1 this looks like a strange move but i guess it's sort of the main line together with d5 in this position since knight to c3 knight to e4 never looked like it offers white all that much recently of course with the trend of going h4 in every position people have also started playing h4 here arguing it's as good a, good a waiting move as rook to e1 modern chess h4s will keep chasing us so rook to e1 pawn to d5 c takes d e takes d knight c3 knight bd7 bishop f4 this is an established theoretical line that's been around for a while pawn to c5 First of all, before we get to the Christmas tree, I never liked this line for black very much. Even if white just takes, I always thought it's unpleasant and I wouldn't play with black. B takes C looks normal, but this formation is just too shaky. I think after knight h4, targeting things, the position is already bad for black. So they have to take with the knight or the bishop, typically with the knight, accepting this isolated pawn and I'm not saying black is lost or anything, but it's not a position I would go for voluntarily. Rook c1, and just, you know, normal stuff. I take white here any day of the week. <clears throat> but there is the move h4. This was a recent game, no, like Korobov, I think, was written in the question. Can someone? Um, I don't know what to say. I did notice that engines under the guidance of Leela and Alpha Zero started giving H4 in pretty much every position. And we have to we have to accept that they're probably right and adjust our thinking to it. That grabbing the space and making a luft is more important than controlling. Controlling the G4 square. In these lines where White also wants to play E3 in many a position. It is, of course, extra useful to have played h4, so this bishop can't get in trouble. With h5, with g5, sorry, being a rest here. And yeah, this is a formation that, I agree, it's sort of new. In the old days, everybody said after you play bishop f4, you shouldn't play e3, because you will lock your bishop in there and will be vulnerable to g5s. But combining it with h4, which really is a new thing, does at least for the time being, safeguard this bishop and it won't get chased down, at least not quickly with h6, g5, although h, h6 does very much look like a legit move here. But after, let's say, rook c1, g5, apparently does not work yet because of tactics, takes, pawn takes, pawn to c6. Don't ask me how this works, but apparently it does takes a knight d4 and the weakening of the black king turns out to be fatal let's say bishop b7 queen g4 and white somehow wins so it is dependent on some specific tactics that are obvious to computers but humans have to worry little about these things but not arguing it doesn't work as for the structure and what to do, I don't know. White, white strikes me as better long term, has more space in the center, d5, or more, more squares in the, more pawns in the center, I should say. d5 could be a bit of a weakness, but once again, it's so dependent on how both sides play and how the structure has changed. Like knight df6, I saw in the games a4 was played, which I guess is useful against c4, a6, b5 plans, and maybe just a useful waiting move. But it's also far from obvious to me that this is the way to go. I would 
guess black plays something like h6. And now after rook c1, you're less concerned about any black expansion here. If these knights get traded, you do want to recapture with a pawn. Then, depending on circumstances, try to activate bishop h3, knight e5. Well, black struggles a bit from this bishop being somewhat boxed in and not having an obvious way to proceed on the queen side. So I do kind of like the resulting positions. I wouldn't go for the h4, e3 plan here, but that's because I'm a simpleton. And I'd be happy with just d takes c5 and that's that small edge here. But yeah, it is, it is fascinating, not just in this position, but in many a position. <clears throat> How mainstream, just playing h4 and taking it from there has become indeed. Yeah, it's not a position I would like for black, but the nature of this line, I never found, found very appealing, appealing to play with black. To begin with, not sure what I would suggest for black instead. d5 is the main move here. I'm not a big Queen's Indian guy, honestly. I would thought. If you wanna if you have to play d5 anyway, might as well do it here without committing a bishop to to b7. But of course, that's a different can of worms. Let's look at the other move order leading to that Christmas tree. E4, c6, d4, d5, e d c d bishop, d3. This is another line where there have been all kinds of funky developments recently. <clears throat> and computers keep telling us that this is not so easy for black. When I think in the old days, of course the line's been around, but it was never considered to be that scary with the old main lines as bishop f4, bishop g4. Where there's also all kinds of developments, but not supposed to be that tricky. So h3 is a new thing, just stopping bishop g4. And if white manages to develop here, go knight f3, castles, rook e1, bishop f4, he'd just be better. So black has to figure out a way to deal with it. Obviously, instead of knight f6, queen c7 has become a big line, arguably. Even bigger line than knight f6 here. But these lines also still very much have a right to exist. This g6, bishop f5 is logical as a way to get the bishop out. Bishop f4, not the only move, but legal as well. And here, bishop e2, also a bit of a new thing. I think they used to take or allow black to take. But bishop e2, arguing this bishop is funny on f5, is a new approach. And now black has to think what he wants to do about this bishop. If he just goes bishop g7, knight f3 castles, it does seem like white's position is once again more pleasant to play. Castles followed by rookie one. So they have looked at other ways to deploy the pieces. One is h6 followed by g5, giving this bishop some breathing spare. <clears throat> Was that English? Almost. And the other is the Christmas tree you mentioned, e6, knight d2, and h5. Here there's more of a defensive setup. It's a different structure where obviously white has not played c4, b3, so there's less pressure on the white center. And it's a better version for white than, than the one we did see. But I do agree that there are similarities with the Christmas tree. And this e6 followed by h5 to keep the bishop safe is a new thing. The point of the move order is that after knight f3, black wants to go bishop d6, not put this bishop on g7, where it's really not doing all that much. And yeah, now it's a sort of typical Karlsbad structure on this side and some funky pawn placing on the other side. Doesn't look like white can use it directly. There's no way to arrest this bishop with g4. So it does look like a playable approach for black courtesy of new engines. You might even go king to f8, followed by king g7 next, and then have a look around. As for the evaluation of the position, I don't know, frankly. I don't mind it for black, but I've always had a soft spot for the Karlsbad structure with with this formation. Let's say, uh, not, do we go king g7? Hmm. And now we start thinking about rook b8, b5. Well, white will start thinking about ways to occupy 
the e5 square, maybe starting with bishop b5. And the struggle gets complicated. I would guess black doesn't want this exchange. So he would go knight e7 here, once again. Revisiting this plan with fairly complex play ahead. This bishop, of course, could become a target one day with knight e5, followed by, H, by g4. But typically, not sure what the right timing is here, so probably not the best move. Typically, when g4 becomes a threat, black can also go h4, stop white from harassing the bishop using this little-known rule, rule called en passant. <clears throat> so, not sure I have anything useful to say as for the plans. These positions are very different and so on. The main plan is not to get this bishop taken with g4 and grabbing some space <coughs> with h5, which yeah, is a new thing in all these positions. Maybe going h4, that's why we weren't castling here if needed. It's an interesting new approach and thanks for bringing it up, I agree. The structure is not in a lot of books or I don't know, probably not in any books because typically you're taught if you put your bishop here, don't go e6 because then it has no way to retreat. But the new hmm, freedom of going h5 whenever we want seems to have fixed that problem. Therefore, I would expect to see more Christmas tree setups. But other than that, I don't have that many general things to say. Every position is different, even with the Christmas tree. I guess typical themes are white could threaten g4 one day and black could have to stop it either by tactics as we've seen in the first example, or by going h4, making it tough to go. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up. It certainly is a new trend, the Christmas tree. In what month do we have? April. What else is there? Wiggy saying, hi, Jan. Great that you're back. Thank you. I've always loved your opening clinics. To celebrate your return, I thought it would be fun to ask something about a line with a peace sacrifice. No. So in the line knight f3, d5, g3, c6, bishop g2, knight f6, castles, bishop f5, c4, e6, d3, knight bd7. Ooh. C, D, E, D, knight c3, bishop e7, e4, takes, takes, knight e4, knight e4, knight c3, b, c, bishop g6. I know rook e1 is not too bad, but sometimes, if I'm in the mood for crazy play, I like to play bishop takes c6. Do you think this move can lead to an advantage or is it better to include h4, h5, h6 and then bishop takes c6? Thanks a lot. Wiggy, what are you doing with your time? That position? If you get it, you'll already be celebrating, no? Like, you'll know so much more than your opponents. I think it does terribly for black in practice. So, so either way sounds great. Let's, let's put it on our little board. Knight to f3. Now was this pawn to d5? Not sure I got the move order right. So first of all, generally, here, white starts with d3. Me, as a proud member of the chicken chess club, I would always go dc4. I do not want any part of this. C takes D, E takes D, Knight C3, E4 lines. So I would definitely take. And these positions don't seem, seem to be that scary. Black goes H6, gets the pieces out. Play continues. Sometimes there are these, these funky Bishop C2 moves as well. Just trying to destabilize white a bit. So that's what I would do with black, both here and after knight bd7. If you don't take here, I would take here with white, but if you start with knight c3, last chance, take it. dc, dc, h6, and still not too worried. But the line was bishop to e7, c takes d, e takes d. Here, yeah, white is not forced to play e4, but it does look very, very scary. I wouldn't want any part of this with black. Because as you mentioned in the question, white has so many options, even down the stretch. After we take this pawn, 
knight to d4, knight c3, bc3, bishop g6, and it's it's a big choice. You mentioned h4, rook e1, and bishop takes c6, all of which looks like look like good moves. I would also like to throw f4 into the ring, which also seems very very scary for black. If he goes h6 to keep the bishop, he'll probably just be crushed. Because now the rook has access to b1 and the black defenses just don't hold. Knight c5, queen g4. And we win. So after f4, black has to go knight f6, according to my engine. f5, bishop h5, queen d2, say castles, h3. And we'll pick up this bishop. Play, play will continue, it's not the end. Black gets three pawns. But in such an open position, I would value the piece higher than the pawns. And I do think that this line is better for white as well. So overall, I do not think black wants any, any part of this position. As for the question, this seems to be a draw against computers. Does look scary for black. So if you're well prepared here, you can certainly go for something like this as well. In correspondence, I wouldn't do it, I guess. I guess it is just a, just a draw, because Compi can't worry about nothing. And Compi in such, such positions will find moves like bishop e4 very, very quickly. But once again, a well-prepared white player here will probably win in practice most of the time. Looks very scary to play with black. So I'm not against it at all. But I would I would choose f4 instead of instead of going for this. Black has other moves here, queen c8 and computers tend to tend to yell zero zero in the end. But it does look horribly, horribly scary for black. I'm not sure if including h4 it helps that much, but compies seem to like it a bit better from White's perspective, which I guess makes sense because you could imagine a scenario where I don't know the square comes in handy or for some reason something's undefended here. Computers still say it's equal after your move of choice. I think Queen B6 they like less now. Then in the other line, because of takes, rookie one. Yeah. Don't ask me. Don't ask me why. King f8, queen d7. It's king d8 here. Queen d5, they're saying, is winning. Well, if we do it directly, without h4, h5, takes, takes, queen b6, takes, and rook to e1. Now, they were less concerned about it. Do we manage to figure out the difference? Are we smart enough for that? Here rook c8 holds. Well here, with these moves included, rook c8, bishop e3, wins. But why exactly? Queen a6, rook a d1. Not sure I get it. What's the difference? Tell us wise computers. Here, 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 here. Queen c6 and black is fine. While here. Queen c6. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. And queen g5 wins. Because h4, h5 was included, now f6 is not possible as the bishop is hanging. Saddle. 
So it looks like, yeah, including h4, h5, and then going for your piece sacrifice might put even more pressure. But after queen c8, computer still gives zeros. So my choice would be f4. Intending to play f5 and grabbing this piece. Which does, does strike me as better for white. And my choice with black would be to never ever enter this position. Looks like a nightmare practically, as you mentioned. There are all these moves, rookie 1, h4, bishop c6, where black might survive hanging on by a threat. But it's it seems completely unplayable. So would not do it with black. I, will, I wouldn't play the line to begin with, but if I ended up here, I would always take on c4. Thanks for the question. What else do we have? Borksting. What's Borksting up to? Borksting is saying, Hi Jan, I'm glad you're back with your insights. I've got a question on a line in the Neo Arkhangelsk. That's. That was Neo Anderson. They just cannot find a good way to get a double edge position. But I don't want to stop playing it. Against the main line with a4 and d4, I enjoy the bishop g4 idea that came to my attention after the game Grishuk Karana. And therefore, Against e4, e5, knight 3, bishop b, uh, yada, yada, yada. d4, bishop b6, bishop b3. I want to make bishop g4 work to stay consistent. My analysis have shown that the end game after the long, complicated line. We'll put it on the board in a minute. Bishop b3, bishop g4, knight b2, castles, h3, bishop h5, bishop g5, and so on and so forth. Should be at least holdable for black. Because I even prefer black in practice. But now to my problem. I recently played in a classical tournament and got to the position after bishop h5 against the feeder master and was all excited to get my, my deep preparation in the end game in the game. But then he played d takes e5 and even though I won the game, brag, but congratulations, after he blundered, I'm still unhappy with the positions. After either d takes e5 followed by bishop b6 at some point or the move I settled on in the game. Knight e5, bishop b6, c, b, g4, bishop g6, knight e5, d. In both positions, I'm struggling to find an active plan for black. Am I just overlooking an option plan, or is this DE5 just an annoying way to depress black? Let's see. Pawn to E4, pawn to E5, knight F3, knight C6, bishop B5, A6, bishop A4, knight F6, castles. What was the move order? Bishop c5, c3, b5, bishop b3, d6, d4, bishop b6, bishop e3. And your question was mainly about bishop g4 here. I don't like that move. It's not that logical to my mind. If white goes a4, then bishop g4 helps covering the rook. But here white is just developing towards the center. And bishop g4 does not feel like a priority. We can get to, to the alternative castles in a minute. But yeah, let's look at your line. Bishop g4, knight bd2, short castles, h3, bishop to h5. And yeah, your analysis was some bishop g5 business. Which I believe, even though takes bishop d5, this is it, right? Takes takes, takes. My computers seem to say that even here, g4 is unpleasant for black, bishop g6, queen d2, rook b8, and rook e1, they weren't very thrilled with. One could continue checking this, I'm not sure how bad it is, but it does look, it does look a little, little unpleasant as well. And yeah, d takes e5, just seems to be trouble. My first instinct was, does this work? Bishop e3, ef, bishop d2, fg, king g7, queen d2, bishop f3, gf, knight e5, which looks in the spirit, but I'm not sure it's enough. Queen e3, f5, f4, knight g6, 
But this is the place I would be trying to make work with black. However, engines do give white a bit of a plus after bishop c2. I'm not sure how bad it is, if you can continue trying trying to defend this. Takes, takes, rook b8 or whatnot. But it doesn't look like, like great fun either. Queen g3, followed by taking here. Maybe black holes would best play, but it's not something I would be looking for as the outcome of the opening either. Yeah, otherwise, I agree with what you're saying. It's, it looks unpleasant for black. If d takes e5, even just queen e2, this bishop is not, is not looking like a great cont contributor. And black has some, some weaknesses. So, yeah, not a big fan. Knight e5, bishop b6, cb, oh, once again. White seems to be better with brutal mesh as g4, bishop g6, knight d4. Just doesn't seem to work very well for black. So I would I would drop this bishop g4 move. Bishop e3 has never been considered to be very scary. And I think if black just plays normally, castles h6, rook e8, which is very much a standard plan. If you're not bothered on the queen side directly, there's not too much to worry about. Obviously, there's some theory here as well. But this is what I would do, which what I think I have played, actually. Main line is something like h6, h3, rook e8, rook e1. And now black faces a choice. Bishop b7 is probably too ambitious, because now after d5, bishop e3, white can take here. And these positions, computers aren't very big on. a4, and white seems to be faster on the queen. On the queen side, then black is on the king side. But there are alternatives. Leela likes this move, rook b8, slowing down a bit. And yeah, preparing in some positions to recapture on b6 with the rook. It doesn't see anything to be too concerned about. It says bishop c2. Now bishop b7 is okay after d5. Now you can take one saddle point of rook b8. It's not going to hang on a8 after some mass captures like here so here you can just grab more material and win so rook b8 in a way prepares bishop b7 which looks funny and yeah no it gives some random lines a3 e takes d c takes d knight e7 followed by knight g6 and we try to pressure the center of course it's a little scary because white does have the center but knight g6 often followed by c5 or obviously targeting this pawn further Seems to be acceptable. The last line is something like rook e7. Preparing queen e8. So I like the move rook b8. There's also more straightforward methods. I'm not sure what the status on this is. This, I think, used to be the main line e, d, c, d, and knight to b4. Threatening to jump and preparing c5. And or bishop b7 to once again target this pawn. Fabi won a game here with d5, or did he win? I think he played this against Anish. But computers are saying, grab the pawn. And put the knight here, and you're fine. All of the positions can get a little crazy. So here, for example, once again, don't ask me why. Knight d4, bishop d7, not the only move, but logical. Bishop takes a4. Computer says, don't recapture, that's too simple. It's not bad either, but take here, live a little. I don't know why I'm showing this, it's a very random line, but it's one that it's spitting out. E takes D, bishop takes D4, or bishop B3, knight E3, F, E, and C5, and he's saying it's fine. <clears throat> d5 far from the only move. I think what's the main move here? Queen b1 maybe? Then c5. Very sharp positions. But black as far as I know is supposed to be fine here as well. So those are the two lines I would be choosing between. Probably I was gonna go rook b8 for surprise value. But not sure since this show is obviously watched by millions of future opponents how much surprise value there's left, but I also don't know what's wrong with E, D, C, D. 
to b4. As mentioned, the important thing to avoid here is going bishop b7, d5 directly. But if black does, I always like these positions for black and didn't think that there was much to worry about. So yeah, my advice is drop the bishop g4 move. Not so important to be consistent here in these lines. Um, just play what works and after after a4, it's a very different position than after bishop e3. Because after a4, bishop g4, just defense against a b5. So yeah, just castle, play h6, rook e8. You'll be fine. Let's do one more question. See what we got. Oof, this is a very short question. Grandmaster Passion. Come on, Passion. Do your own homework. You can't just give me a main position after three moves and ask for all the answers. D what sh should you play against d4, not f6? c4, g6, 3, h4? I don't know. Don't play g6. It's risky. It's weakening the king side. Anyway. Mm hmm... Yeah, times are changing, h4, in every position, long-term, short-term, in slower Grunfelds, is just very, very mainstream. And even here, it's a much more serious move than people, I would guess, initially thought, because it looks somewhat insane. But maybe the insane move is g6, indeed, weakening the king side. Go here. They will still play h4, as we've seen in these Queen's Indians later, earlier. But at least we're not giving a target. I'm far from an expert here. I would guess Peter Swidler has smart things to say in his chessable Grunfeld course about this move. As for me, just logically, my first instinct was we <coughs> we should counter with a Benko. But clicking-wise, it hasn't looked it hasn't looked easy. Like after CB, A6, E3. Computers do not give black full equality here. Which I'm not sure this should discourage everybody from playing this. Still looks like such an improved, improved Banco Gambit. But computers aren't too happy. D5 plans don't strike me as very logical. Because here H5 just gains in strength. So what I would probably land on is playing some sort of combination of King's Indian and Benoni. I'm sure pure King's Indian players won't be very concerned and just play whatever. Castle Z5 or Knight C6 or any move that makes them happy here. But I'm I'm not much of a King's Indian player. And I guess this H4 is mainly directed against Grunfeld players. Make them at least play King's Indian with H4 if they decide to abandon plans with, with D5, which probably they should. So I would play something like C5 here probably, trying to take this to a Benoni kind of thing where white has played H4. DC5, even DC5, Queen A5 is possible, but even DC5, Leela isn't very concerned. This takes, go b6, bishop d7, knight c6. You'll be all right. Hmm. So I would expect white to play d5. Of course, there are different movers to, to lead to this. And try my luck in these positions, e6. Why does some moves? It looks like they usually play bishop e2. h5, we can take. Nothing special. Um, so it looks like they usually play, play bishop here. E takes D. Now go E takes D, which typically, if E6, E6 and E5 is delayed, is a more challenging option from Black's perspective than C takes D, after which Black just gets a dream Benoni here. You target the E4 pawn immediately, and Black is fine. So I would look at this position, and we, we haven't played castles yet for a reason, because... We probably will castle, but I like delaying it a little bit to keep white guessing what target h5 will hit. 
and start with knight bd7 here. I'm not sure this is a very well-established line. My best guess is not, but it does look playable for me. Playable to me for black. Bunch of options. White goes h5. We can actually take. Takes, pawn takes. Black seems fine. King is a bit weakened, but we have our bishops. It's a very active play. So not to worry about h5 yet. I guess knight f3 looks normal. Knight f3, one drawback of h4. Gives us access to this square, knight g4. And the piece become very jumpy. It's a little scary, because the h file will be open. Or the pawn will be on h6. Nowadays these crazy h4 players, they often just put the pawn here and say, you know, I don't want anything special. Just want to go h6, see how it goes. This version, how bad can it be? Bunch of moves here, queen e7, rook e8, you name it. I would think that black is fine. <clears throat> so yeah, one can keep analyzing here. Knight g5 is a move. We pin, rook e8, h g, h g. And it looks like we're not getting checkmated anytime soon. King f1, knight d f6. The bishop comes out, g3, bishop f5. Position is complex, but I kind of like it for black. a6, queen d7, then maybe b6. Rook a7, rook e7 is a plan, maybe. Rook e7, rook, e, rook a8 is a plan. Looks very playable. If we back up a little, of course white has other options. I think one of my engines wanted I don't know, some king f1 somewhere here. Sickles. Just go g3, king g2. Knight e5, g3. Here we can wait with castles. Play a6. I don't know, I guess white plays a4. In some move order, king g2, castles, a4, to stop b5. Black goes rook e8. Once again, h5 doesn't really checkmate us. So the engine wanted some slower play, getting the pieces out somehow, knight h3, b6. I like this b6 idea in the rook swing. Rook a7, rook e7. And once again, black's position looks very, very reasonable to me. It's super complicated, but... That's what I would do. Once again, far from an expert, and I haven't spent a lot of time researching the options here. But to me, currently, this looks like a reasonably logical approach. C5, D5, E6, and take it from there. How was this line? This was some weird stuff. No, H5, not H5, G4, not six, G5, not H5. Should be two. Now black faces a choice between ED, which seemed fine, or the very greedy. Bishop c3, bc, knight g7, which is a bit greedy, but might also be playable. <clears throat> so passion. I hope this answers your question. The usual disclaimers. I don't play g6. Certainly don't play h4. What do I know? I do know something about chess openings and the great thing about this show is that i also learned something there's so many topics out there so many good questions so thanks for for asking this was the first episode there will be more to come if you're watching this um, in april 2022 i think for this season we still accept some questions so if you want to ask me one Go premium on Chess24 with my code Yanistan. You get 40% off. Find the article, Opening Clinic 27, and post your question. If you don't make it in this season, because you're watching this later, the, the plan currently, at, at the very least, is to keep this going and come up with more seasons. Sorry for the long break. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. I'll be doing... The, the seasons, whatever we call them, in, yeah, like, one-hour installments as this one, where we go through, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten questions, depending how long we take. Hopefully, we all learn something. Thank you for watching. See you next show.